isn't known for powerful vehicles. It's the company that brought us the Rio and the Sportage. Sure, the Telluride was a game changer and it gave the automaker a huge boost, but beyond the sadly mostly overlooked by the public Kia Stinger, Kia doesn't go all that fast. Well, except when it does. This is the Kia EV6 GT. Now at first glance, it looks like well, just the regular EV6, but it has GT badging, it has larger wheels, and it has larger brakes. You have 15 inches in the front, 14.2 inches in the back, and you need that extra stopping power because this EV is a screamer. With 576 horsepower and 545 pound-feet of torque, the EV6 GT essentially takes that base of the EV6, that EV that we really love, and makes it better. It's faster, it's quicker around corners, it stops better, it's all around, well, more fun because you can do stuff like this. The Kia EV6 is one of the best EVs on the market right now. A stylish crossover with a solid range from a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack based on an 800 volt architecture, which means you can charge it at up to 240 kilowatts at a compatible DC fast charger. That's faster than anything right now from BMW or Mercedes. And then Kia said, hey, let's make the EV6 punk rock. Kia says the EV6 GT will do zero to 60 in 3.4 seconds, which is quick for what is essentially started out as a, well, a very comfortable, well-built, nice to drive electric crossover. Essentially, it's really tough to test that uh, on regular roads because you know, you're going zero to 60 and trying to do a quarter mile on a regular road, that's not safe. So you know what, let's go to the drag strip and try it out. So my drag strip launch wasn't that great. I kept fiddling around instead of taking off and the light was green. Still, 3.4 seconds, zero to 60, that's insane. It's faster than a Ferrari Roma, it's faster than a Hurricane, it's faster than some Taycons, which is, you know, for half the price. And this vehicle will do up to 161 miles an hour, which is something you should never, ever, ever do on a road. But if you happen to be at a track, which I am at today, you can try. Sure, going in a straight line is fun, but real world applications, eh, not so much. And also, you wanna couple that with being able to go around corners. Fortunately, Kia has updated the suspension on this vehicle so that it can handle corners far better than its regular counterpart. Kia has outfitted the EV6 GT with an electronically controlled suspension system that's specifically for this car and an electronic limited slip differential. You put that together and you can really feel the difference around corners. It's far better planted to the road than the regular EV6. And I'm, even, I'm only in sport mode right now. I'm not even in GT. Let's turn that puppy on. There we go. So the cornering is outstanding, both on the track and in the real world. But there's also something else this vehicle will do. Drift mode. How do you put it in drift mode? Well, first put it in GT mode, then you tap and hold on the uh, traction control until that's completely defeated. Then you hold your foot down on the brake and you hold the two paddles back until drift mode is enabled. It is a lot of different little things you have to do, uh, but at the end of the day, now you're drifting. All that performance doesn't come at the expense of what we like about the EV6 interior. It's still very roomy, both in the front and the back, and the EV6 GT does come with these new sports seats that are actually comfortable and they have side bolsters so when you go around corners, you're not sliding everywhere. Here in the front, we still have the 12.3 inch dual displays. You have your dash cluster here. Um, it's a little busy design wise. They have like this little valley or half pipe for snowboarding here in the middle, but the information you need is still there. It's still pretty easy to read. Here in the infotainment system, we have this very minimalistic home screen, but once you scroll over to the right or you flip over to the right, you still have what is essentially a tablet. It's still all the apps, they're easy to read. Kia isn't breaking any new ground when it comes to infotainment uh, navigation, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is, it, we're all used to tablets. We've been using them for over 10 years. Why mess with something that we already understand? For those at the track who need power for the rest of their stuff, there's the usual USB ports, but also this vehicle has vehicle to load with support up to 1900 kilowatts thanks to power outlets, like the kind you have in your house. You could run a blender for post-race smoothies. While performance is great and everyone loves going fast, the reality is most of us are, well, we're driving around town. We're picking up the kids, we're doing errands, and in comfort and eco mode, the EV6 GT, well, it 
essentially recreates the feeling from the EV6. It's slightly harsher, but not much. And it's enough to, you probably wouldn't even notice that this is a performance vehicle if you didn't know any better. It's just as happy on the track as it is at Costco in the parking lot doing a grand total of five miles an hour. While it's a performance car, it's still a Kia, and you're still gonna get all the driver's assistance tech that you would get in any other Kia. We have adaptive cruise control. I'm doing 80 right now on a 75 mile an hour freeway. Got adaptive cruise control. Uh, once I catch up to that semi, it'll slow me down until I move over to the next lane. Um, it has lane centering in addition to lane keeping assist. The Hyundai Group's lane centering, it's, it's okay. It's fine. It does the job. It's not as good as, say, Mercedes. But of course, you're also saving like $40,000 if you buy this instead of the Mercedes. Well, every performance vehicle should have larger brakes, just like this vehicle. Kia did something interesting when it comes to regenerative braking. Now, in the regular eco, comfort, and sport mode, uh, it'll use regenerative braking up to 0.4 Gs. So up to 0.4 Gs, when you're, when you're applying the brakes, you're using regenerative braking, and after that, the friction brakes come on, you know, the, the fancy new larger brakes that they have on here. In GT mode, it goes up to 0.6 Gs. So you're getting a little bit more regenerative braking while you're in this, essentially this, this track mode for this vehicle. There is a downside. All that extra power comes at a price and you'll be paying for all this awesome with range. The EV6 GT has an EPA rated range of 206 miles. Meanwhile, the EV6 rear wheel drive long range version has a range of 310 miles. That's over 100 miles more than the EV6 GT. Meanwhile, the all wheel drive long range version has a range of 252 miles. And there's the price difference. The rear wheel drive EV6 starts at $48,500. This EV6 GT starts at $61,400, so more. And then there's the weirdness in the lineup. This is the GT, but there's also an EV6 GT line. So you have the GT line, which is not as powerful as this vehicle. And now, of course, what I'm driving, the GT. I mean, they had to know they were building the GT when they introduced the GT line, right? It's uh, confusing. So it's great on the track, it's great in the real world, and as a car you just need to drive around town, it's still a crossover, still has plenty of cargo space and room in the back for friends. Plus it's filled with all the technology that Kia has been putting in all its EVs. And it's half the price of a Taycan. So if you're looking for a Taycan Lite, this might be it. For more automotive coverage of EVs at a track, be sure to subscribe to Wingadget.